Hello, good morning. Thank you everyone for joining this online seminar on nuclear power plant shutdown and decommissioning and socioeconomic impacts jointly organized by the group of European municipalities with nuclear facilities and the Spanish Association of Municipalities in Nuclear Areas. I am Mary Chay Martel. I am the coordinator of GMF and the director of Mary Ann's strategic consultancy uh, based in Barcelona, and I will be chairing and moderating the webinar today. We would like to thank the speakers from the different European countries um, who, have, uh, who are here today from Belgium, Spain, France, United Kingdom and Bulgaria who have accepted to join us today and share their knowledge and experience on these matters with us. We have now more than 200 participants registered for this webinar from 25 countries all over the world, uh, not even in Europe, so even from Argentina, so muy buenos días because it's four hours behind and uh, from South Africa even, so welcome all to this seminar. Before I give the floor to the speakers, I would just like to know to go now through some practicalities. Firstly, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available on our websites, GMF and AMAC websites. Second, as an audience, you don't have, uh, you're not able to use your webcam or your microphone, but you can communicate with us through the chat function and also please use the questions and answers function that you can find at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Tania Perko, one of the panelists, will assist me in trying to address your questions. Thirdly, thanks to the European Commission for providing interpretation to Spanish, English and French. We have interpretation to Spanish, English, French and Bulgarian. And you can click on the interpretation button at the bottom of your, of your screen, which is like a connected world. That's how we are nowadays in a connected world. So to choose the language you would like to hear. This webinar will, will last for three hours and a half with a pause around um, 11.30. So again, I would like to remind the panelists to keep the time allocated to them so that we can pause for 10 minutes and then go back. And without further ado, just let me give the floor to Mr. Juan Pedro um, Sanchez, the president of AMAC for his welcome speech. So Pedro, the floor is yours, the Zoom is yours. Muy, muy buenos días. Muy buenos días a todos y bienvenidos a este seminario sobre los impactos socioeconómicos del cierre del desmantelamiento de centrales nucleares. Me van a permitir que salude en primer lugar a la presidenta del GMF, a Pia Armstrong, a los compañeros de los 13 países que formamos parte del Grupo Europeo con instalaciones nucleares, a los ponentes de Bélgica, Francia, Reino Unido, Bulgaria y España, quienes nos hablarán de sus experiencias tras el cierre de instalaciones, a los representantes de las empresas e instituciones vinculadas con el mundo nuclear y a todas aquellas personas que nos siguen hoy online porque entienden que los asuntos que vamos a tratar durante esta jornada pueden ser interesantes. Y cómo no, saludar y agradecer a Merichel Martel y a Arancha Rosado como coordinadoras de este evento. Para MAC, la celebración de este seminario sobre los impactos socioeconómicos que produce el cierre y desmantelamiento de las centrales nucleares es muy importante. En España actualmente tenemos cerradas tres centrales nucleares y además existe un calendario previsto de clausura progresiva para todas ellas que finaliza en 2035. Por tanto, no podemos perder el tiempo. Tenemos delante un reto muy importante para intentar minimizar los efectos negativos que para todos supone el cierre y el desmantelamiento de las que han sido hasta ahora la principal industria de nuestras zonas en cuanto a empleo y actividades económicas se refieren. Llevamos tiempo trabajando en planes de desarrollo alternativos en la comarca de la central nuclear de Santa María de Garoña, en Burgos, 14 municipios, los tres grupos de acción local, la Sociedad para el Desarrollo de la Provincia de Burgos, Sodebur, la Diputación Provincial de Burgos, la Diputación Foral de Álava y el Gobierno de Castilla y León 
hemos trabajado conjuntamente para elaborar una estrategia de dinamización socioeconómica para la zona de influencia de la central nuclear de Garoña. Todo un ejemplo de colaboración interadministrativa que es fundamental para el logro de futuros objetivos. En otra zona, en Guadalajara, en la zona de la central nuclear José Cabrera, en Almonacid de Zorita, los municipios del entorno también han elaborado un plan de desarrollo denominado Plan de Revitalización de la Comarca de Zorita, que va a ser sin duda de gran utilidad para todo el proceso de transición justa que será liderado por el Ministerio de, para la Transición Ecológica y Reto Demográfico. Y quiero aprovechar también este momento para agradecer al Ministerio y a la propia Vicepresidenta Cuarta del Gobierno de España, Teresa Rivera, que a través del Instituto de la Transición Justo hayan tomado la iniciativa y el impulso necesario. Agradecemos sinceramente que cuenten con los pueblos nucleares como agentes necesarios para formar parte de todo este proceso, iniciado ya con la firma de los protocolos para el desarrollo participativo de diseño de convenios de transición justa que servirán para apoyar a proyectos que se realicen en todas las zonas afectadas por el cierre. Y ya, sin más, deseando que tengan una jornada, que tengamos una jornada interesante, doy, el paso, doy paso a Michelle Martel para que continuemos con este seminario. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Pedro. And now I will give the floor to Pia Armstrong, the president of GMF and mayor of Chevlinge in Sweden. So, Pia, please. You can have the Zoom now. Remember to unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Dear colleagues from all parts of Europe. What's uh, and the other parts of the world that I, I found out today are here. First of all, I want to thank AMAC, the organization comprising mayors with nuclear facilities in Spain, and its president, Mr. Juan Pedro Sanchez. This digital conference was invited by AMAC, and AMAC kindly asked GMF to be involved to enable mayors from other parts of Europe. Uh, with nuclear facilities to participate. GMF is a growing network of European mayors and other local community representatives hosting Europe's nuclear energy production units and other nuclear facilities. I want to give a special welcome to the city representative of Koslodi in Bulgaria, our latest member city. Koslodi will present their experience on the decommissioning process regarding the outdated reactors. I also want to emphasize that our colleagues from Asketa in Germany is taking part today, as well the friends are CICEN, with together with Belgium and UK are on the speakers list today. Oh, I also welcome all participants outside Europe. This well-prepared program is on account of our Secretary General, Meritel Martel, who which her compet uh, competence, energy and develop network has enabled us to meet today. She has managed, and with the support of the European Commission, the seminar also is translated. This is a bit complicated doing this digital, but I hope that all will work this morning. Today's focus will be on the decommissioning process with examples from many communities where the nuclear installation during many years have had a positive impact on the local economy, thus the social conditions. Both the installation and energy produced are beneficial for the local communities hosting the nuclear industry installation. We all know the scientific and technical challenges the decommissioning process must solve. Protection and safeguard of our citizens 
are of highest priority and a nuclear waste handling process must comply with highest standard, both at the production units under deconstruction and at the nuclear storage facilities now being built. Some at new site, some at the energy production sites. Yes, and um, I had a presentation, if we could please. Um, I, I don't have your presentation, Pia. Uh, it's Mats who has it. It will be send it. with you in a minute. Okay. Okay, we can see it now. Yes. Uh, but, the, but the closing of such big units like nuclear power plants have both economic and social impacts. The loss of so many jobs in small, often remote communities will change the daily lives for many GMF members and the conditions for my colleague mayors. We have experienced this in Schärvningen. I will not go into details, but just give a brief presentation on how the closing of Basebeck nuclear power plant took place. The national government decision to close was part of a national political deal. There was no communication with Schärvningen mayor in this process. The blocks were closed during a period of six years but we are waiting in 15 years for the deconstruction work to start. The closing of Basenbeck nuclear power plant have changed the structure of our local community from an industry-based economy to a post-industrial community where many of our citizens have to commute to neighboring cities. We had both a great loss of direct jobs on the nuclear power plant but also all the subcontractors lost their orders. You can estimate for every employee on a nuclear power plant, the, that's one additional workplace on a subcontractor. Often specialized competencies, which leave the region very fast when a de decision on closing a nuclear power plant is taken. In Sweden, we have no local tax on enterprises nor on the energy product produced. The only economic positive impact a big workplace like a nuclear power plant are the employees personal income tax. Housing therefore became a very important issue for Schärvlinge and Lederköpinge where the plan construction of Basenbeck nuclear power plant started and expanded in the 1970s. In many other countries, the direct economic impact of the nuclear power plant will put the local council economy under great stress. There is a need to take this into account at national political level. In Schävlinge had only one big economic problem after the closing of Basenbeck, and that was the big and extended fire brigade, which had specialized nuclear emergency competence and its size was and still are too big for our small community. The economic support from the nuclear power plant disappeared as soon as the last block was closed. But we had to deal with this oversight unit during many years before being able to balance the organization. So after over 30 years of work, the site selection, the nuclear waste company Escobay decided to propose Östhammar, north from Stockholm, at the best place for a final repository for the nuclear waste. Two local communities, Oskarshamn and Östhammar, are positive to host the facilities. The need to start building the final repository is becoming urgent 
the remaining nuclear reactors, which stands for about 45% of the electric energy production, estimates that the intermediary nuclear waste site club in Oskarshamn will not be able to handle more waste in 2023. And the industry is really worried how to proceed and foresee a possible lack of electric energy produced, which means Sweden has to import energy from neighboring countries, maybe coal produced energy, which will have very negative environmental impact. I now let Mary take over and lead our seminar. Thank you very much for listening.